Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Uh, today we're gonna look at a crazy quilt. And I have probably seven crazy quilts or so in my collection of vintage quilts, but this one's really special to me because it was made by my great grandmother. And uh, it's one of those quilts that I remember as a kid just loving just to touch. It's all made with velours and wools and actually probably not velours, probably velvets, uh, and uh, just some really cool fabrics, and it's so soft to touch. And it's one of my earliest memories of being exposed to quilts. Uh, and I, you know, I think that it really had shaped me through the years on making quilts. So let's take a closer look at my great-grandmother's crazy quilt. So let's first take a peek at the fabrics. And you can see here that there are many different types that are making up this quilt, and um, none of which are cottons. They're all upholstery fabrics or these wonderful velvets or, you know, just heavy, heavy fabrics. And they make this quilt. And even on the back, when we look at the back, you'll see it's wool. Every bit of the back is pieced wool, and I, I love that. Uh, the other thing we notice is this beautiful stitching. This stitch is actually called the feather stitch. Um, I've also heard it called the chicken foot stitch. And it kind of does look like chicken feet. Uh, but it is done meticulously. It's beautifully done. The, the stitches are even. And uh, it just, it's almost like she was showing off her abilities to make this embroidery stitch. And I love that. Uh, the other thing we notice also besides the fabric and the stitching is the craziness, how it's just patched together in a random way. And it just adds, of course, to that whole idea of a crazy quilt and what we all think of when we think of a crazy quilt, with the exception of there's no, there's no embellishments within each block, which we see traditionally on a crazy quilt. I think that's interesting too. I have this book and I'll put a link below. Uh, and you, you oftentimes we think of these, like the owl and the spider webs and the different things that we put onto the crazy quilts. This quilt does not have that, nor does it look like it ever had that. So that's kind of cool too, because um, she was just simple with it and it works. It's so beautiful. Another cool thing that I never noticed until I started preparing for this video is that she... Let's see if I can find a good example of this here. At first, when I looked at this, I thought that she took pieces and pieced them together and then embroidered on top of all the seams. That's not the case. This particular piece is one piece of fabric and my great grandmother actually embroidered on the fabric to give the illusion that it's three separate pieces. How cool is that? How smart is that? I love that about this quilt because it really makes it look like it's a, a lot more work went into it than really was it tricks the eye. And I think that's really, really cool. On the edges of this quilt, you can see it's a knife edge meaning that the two, the front and the back were folded over and then stitched. And you can see there are these little itty bitty black stitches uh, that hold it together. And then she actually embroidered onto the edge as well. So cool. It's in great shape. So let's look at the back. I'll turn it over if I can without knocking down all of my recording equipment. Okay, so the back is all pieced wool. It is hand pieced. So the front's hand pieced and the back is hand pieced. How difficult was that to do? But you can see it absolutely is. And she really didn't worry about the, em the embroidery coming through the other side, which I love um, because, you know, hey, it is what it is, right? It held it together. What is remarkable about this is that she made sure that everything was straight, which is still it baffles me how makers do that, how they can get the back and the front straight when they are not um, using batting and they're not doing it the traditional way. So I, I just, you know, hey, goals for myself, right, I guess. <laughs> so you can see all the wonderful stitches here coming through. This is what held it together. There is no quilting 
per se. It's and there's no batting in this either because probably the weight you don't really need the batting uh, to, for the effect of this quilt. And you can also see she didn't exactly cut any of her uh, threads either. So she just kind of let them go or knotted them where they were. And it's really cool. The final thing I want to say about this quilt, and um, I'll try to show it on here, but uh, I do have some pictures that I'll also show of this. So this bottom was added later along with this long piece here. Okay. On the bottom of the quilt, uh, it was added after the base of the quilt was done or maybe not completely done, but you know, the pieces were extended. So the quilt in her eyes, I think was finished. And then she added more probably to just make it longer, uh, maybe to fit a bed or well, probably to fit a bed is what it was. So I think that's cool because she was innovative too. She didn't get so hung up on, Oh, you know, I'm done. Oh, too bad. It's, you know, not going to be big enough. She actually went the extra mile and added it. Now that was probably out of necessity. She probably needed a bed covering. I think maybe. According to my mother though, you know, she used just old scraps and she did this kind of um, for fun, for a hobby to keep her hands busy. I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, I still think that's cool that this was added later. So although I never got to meet my great grandmother, uh, this quilt, I feel like she talks to me a little bit through this quilt because there are many lessons I've learned from looking at this quilt. And one of those things is that if you're making a crazy quilt and you want to give the illusion that there's more pieces than there actually are, just add embroidery. How ingenious is that? I love that about this quilt. You know, it just makes it look like there's more. Uh, another thing that I think is important to learn from this quilt is that if you haven't made it the exact size you need, just add on. You know, as quilters, we sometimes get into this box that it's like, oh, well, the pattern says this, or, um, you know, this is what I have a lot of fabric for, and I can't really add to that. You know, we set ourselves up for failure sometimes. When in reality, we need to give ourselves a break. And I think through this whole series of looking at old quilts, that's been the major lesson that's, that's held true throughout is that we have to stop with the rules and have some fun and let our creativity come through. And the last thing that I think is really important to remember about this quilt or learn from this quilt is, boy, you know, whatever you're great at, make that shine. This this feather stitch is flawless and it's just, it looks awesome, you know, and she obviously was showing off a little bit maybe, perhaps, you know, with how good she is at making that stitch. So remember to accentuate the positives in all of your work that you do. And, uh, you know, if you're really good at it, keep going with it. I think those are really good lessons. There's probably a few more, but I'm gonna stick with those three. I'm so grateful for this platform to be able to share this quote with you. Uh, it is definitely one of my favorites, but I think I say that about almost every one. Can you pick a favorite? It's kind of like your kids, right? I don't know. Anyway, uh, I do love this quote and I hope it stays in our family forever. So if you're watching this a hundred years from now, if YouTube is even around then, to my great grandkids, make sure you treasure this quote. It was special to me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please consider subscribing and um, thank you for all your support, your comments, your love, everything. The messages I've been getting are incredible and I really appreciate it. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you soon. Bye.